Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's a joy to be together here at St. Mary's in person, face mask to face mask or online. Thank you for joining us for today's message, for today's service. The Spirit is here. The, the sacred music is beautiful and God is with us always. And this Lenten period, today is the fourth Sunday of our Lenten season, the, first, the fourth Sunday of Lent, and we've been doing a series of, um, on the Sermon on the Mount. And do you remember our theme? Do you remember our theme? This side up, this way up. And we're reminded that these, what Jesus is teaching on the mountain, these be attitudes, these, these teachings are the core of our Christianity. These are our core values. And Jesus is saying, get it right at the beginning, folks. Because if we turn the box upside down and we open it from the wrong side, life gets messy, things spill out, life is fragile. And he's saying, this side up. This side up. Get the teachings right at the beginning because this, these teachings are at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And he's saying, leaders, Christians, non-Christians, people who are hearing my message for the first time, these are the core teachings. This is what I want you to know. In the first week, just a short little overview, the first week was on the Beatitudes. Be this attitude for true contentment, for true happiness. It's from the very core of our being inside. It doesn't come from the ways of the world because Jesus is saying we do things different. And the second one, second Sunday, was to be salt and light. And if salt has lost its flavor, then what good is it? And if a light is under a bushel, what help is it? but to stand tall and put our lights tall so that other people can see the light of Christ. And then last week, we tied in the Ten Commandments with the teachings of Jesus about an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, revenge? No. No, because we do things different. We speak life into people. We love our neighbor as ourself. We put God first in everything. We live a life of generosity and graciousness and kindness. We live the servant life. And he, he urged us last week to be perfect. And we realize that that word perfect does not mean without fault because we are human. Thanks be to God. So we can make mistakes. Yay. It's okay. But that perfect, that word means complete. Be perfect because be complete, be whole. Be, be complete because why? Because Christ is in us. And the lesson this morning was we are saved by grace, not by works. So glory, hallelujah, make a mistake, it's fine. Jesus made us that way. He didn't make us perfect. So we celebrate and today we look about this verse about not worrying. Okay, hmm, well, there we go. We're in a worldwide pandemic, and hopefully we're getting ourselves out of it. Well, we don't get ourselves out of it, do we? God gets us out of it because we're saved by grace. And so as we look at this do not worry we realize that our focus, our attention, our affection, our resources are all to be centered in heaven. This side up, it's not as the world says, 
It's not as the world says, it's this side up. And it's very different than the world teaches. And Jesus is saying all that focus is on the eternal things. We're just passing through. We're just pilgrims. We're just guests in God's world. We're only here for a little bit. Just a little bit. And it says in the, in the Psalms that, it's, that our life is not even as wide as our hand. Look at that. Just a little bit. And so we look at the scripture today and this morning, and we backtrack just a little bit. I ask you to open your Bibles, get on your cell phones to the scriptures, not to your text messages. Google Matthew 6. Today's scriptures are Matthew 6, verses 25, but we're going to backtrack just a little bit to Matthew 6, verse 1, because Jesus is talking about the, the Pharisees and the, and the Jewish people that they were giving in four, in, and they were giving in three different ways. They were giving to the needy, they were doing prayer and fasting, all works of righteousness. And what does he say at the very beginning? He says, be careful. What do you mean, be careful? Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness to be seen by others. I had a very practical experience in Madagascar because we would have a lot of beggars. And we would constantly, wherever we went, there were people begging and asking us for money. And here we are, my husband's a bishop, he's wearing purple and the big cross, and I'm a priest, and I'm, I'm sometimes wearing a collar in Madagascar, um, but not to the grocery store or anything. But they know who we are because the community's small, and so we're expected to give. And so I would have my money folded in such a way that I could pull it out of my pocket one by one and, and do a give and go. I give it and go, because that's what I was supposed to do. Give and go, like a check off. And one, one time, and especially at the airport when we would pick up short-term visitors who would come and come and see what God is doing and be a part of that, I had my give and go money ready and I went up and I was about to give and go, and I, I felt the little nudge of, of God say, what's his name? And I'm like, I don't know, you know, but you know, I'm going to give and go. What's his story? Oh, you mean you want me to stop and talk to him? Be careful. Be careful. Not to do what we do to be seen by others. Be careful not to just check it off the, the righteous act list. I've done this today, so I've been a good girl. Be careful on what we do not to be seen by others but to be doing it to the glory of God because he sees our heart. He knows our core. He wants us to get deep. He wants us to know ourselves. He wants us to go into that subconscious of why we do the things that we do. So do we get the idea? Whose nod of approval matters most? Who defines what really matters? And Jesus told his disciples that the core value is this, this side up. Does what I am doing please God? And worrying goes against God's character. Because what, does it, what happens when we worry? Are we trusting God when we worry? 
Or are we depending upon ourselves? Are we living off of the grace of God when we worry, knowing that we are saved by grace? Or are we saying, oh man, I got to get this done or it's not going to happen? Today's gospel is reminding us that life is valuable. Your life, my life, our life. Are you not much more valuable than the sparrows? Are you not much more valuable that the gr of, of the grass? And in the Holy Land, the grass was thrown into the fire to keep the, the fire going. Grass is here today and gone tomorrow. It's green today, it's brown tomorrow. Are you not much more valuable? We are. Our life has value. And so we have a tendency to worry because we're human beings. But what can offset that worry? All right, Google Philippians 4. It's in the New Testament over to the right. And Philippians 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, Paul writes, I'm going to say it, rejoice. Let your gentleness, gentleness be evident to all because the Lord is near. And here's the antidote to worry. Are you ready for it? Do not be anxious about anything. Okay, do not worry. But in everything, everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You know, amazing things can happen through the sacred music. This morning when I was listening, Brandon urged us to go into a creative imagination with our mind and go to where the spirit flowed and where the music flowed. And I saw myself as heavy, like this. And perhaps it's the transition from Madagascar and the many changes and the worries of the world. And I saw myself as this. And as he played, as they played, I saw the host of heaven come, surround me. And the angels were taking brick by brick. One angel was taking it off, giving it to the other angel, and taking it, and taking it. We're not saved by our own salvation. We don't have to have it all together. Yes, we'll worry because we're humans, but this talks about anxiety. This talks about going, going beyond the, the natural tendency to be concerned. And Jesus is saying, don't worry, because your life is valuable to me. Pray with thanksgiving, because I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to bless you with it. So be excited about the blessing that's going to come. Be thankful and gra grateful for that blessing that's going to come because your life is valuable and I want to bless you. So trust God. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and all these things, all these good things, all these things that are going to be miraculous and, and abundant and peace-giving because life happens and we have hard circumstances. These things will be given to you as well. And I love the sense of humor of God. 
don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Life is valuable. Your life is valuable. Pray without ceasing, with gratitude and thanksgiving, and trust God because he cares for you. In the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.